Uh, as I understand it, the ban would be on any new uh, XL bully dogs, but dogs coming to this country, I don't know, being born, whatever. So nobody would be able to have a XL bully dog as a pet after the ban. But people who've already got them would be allowed to keep them. Uh, so, you know, you have male bully dogs, you have female bully dogs, things will happen. Uh, they'll have puppies. So what's the point of the ban if you've got already uh, a population of XL bully dogs in situ in this country? Mm. So the ban is complicated and actually, as they heard today, it's not an easy thing for them to even do. First of all, you need to define the XL bully, which is not an easy thing yeah, because no, it's a crossbreed yeah. of dog. Uh, secondly, if they were banned, and as it stands, they will still be banned, okay? so. A lot of great evidence was brought today to show that it's not an easy thing for the government to just step in and do because of the impact on rescues, because of the logistics. How do you measure these dogs? Once they're typed, are we going to make such a broad type that loads of dogs are included? Is it going to be so narrow that actually we're not going to get to the root of the problem here? Um, and many, 75% of the experts in the room said actually the data is not sufficient to even be banning them in the first place. So complicated. If the dog is banned, then you will need to uh, go for an exemption. So you would need to pay to have your dog's ear tattooed, get them neutered. Mm -hmm. The veterinary profession in the room said, do you know, actually, if we estimate there are around 50,000 XL bullies in the UK right now, the vets are not going to be able to keep up with neutering that many massive dogs, you know? They're not little, uh, little pugs that you can pop into a, a small kennel in a vet. These dogs require mm. big kennel space, um, considerably more sedation. So it's, it's a really complicated thing that they're trying to do, but... I'm really happy because today uh, Neil Hudson promised that there would be much larger measures and that both sides so of government. Neil Hudson again? So he chairs the EFRA Select okay, Committee. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he Probably is himself. Know that, know that. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> He's a vet. Mm. So it's fantastic to see that he has that level of, of knowledge as well. And the Select Committee were really. Um, really balanced in the questions they asked and thoughtful in the way that they approached the discussion with the experts. And they can see this is not an easy thing to do. Yeah, uh, there was a problem with drugs, mm. uh, you know, during the, uh, the sort of um, rave uh, phase where people were, when they were taking ecstasy and things like mm. this. And uh, what the dealers were doing, every time uh, they sort of made a new rave drug illegal. They slightly changed the chemicals, mm. uh, the chemical makeup, and therefore the new drug fell outside the law. Yes. I believe that's the problem with XL bully dogs. Now, we define an XL bully dog by its kind of DNA, change that slightly, and all of a sudden you've got a legal dog. That's the problem, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. And actually, even with DNA, you know, the, the chief vet in the room, um, Dr. Martin, said DNA evidence doesn't work. It doesn't stand up. It's not strong enough to actually convict any dog of being mm. a, a certain breed. And so this is it. If what we're trying to do is improve responsible dog ownership, it needs to be so much wider and affect loads of other dogs who are also creating havoc that don't look like XL bullies. Yeah. Um, I was stunned to hear you say there are 50,000 of them. I didn't realise that. Estimated, yeah. That's, that's an enormous number. And, uh, you know, some of them are causing terrible problems. Mm -hmm. Death, for God's mm -hmm. sake. Um, same old argument. Uh, you, you know, that argument, uh, there's no such thing as a dangerous dog, just dangerous owners. Mm. I mean, XL bully dogs, they certainly look uh, very dangerous. They, they look scary. Uh, are they dangerous inherently? Is there something in their makeup that makes them vicious uh, and likely to attack? Or is it purely because they've got rubbish owners, mm. uh, in fact, owners who deliberately train them up to be like this, to be vicious uh, and dangerous? What the evidence suggests, hands down, is that breed is not a reliable indicator of behaviour, OK? We cannot say, if you look this way, you will behave this way. And also, aggression is complicated. It can affect lots of different dogs. They can be affected in lots of different ways. It's a functional behaviour dogs need to keep themselves safe. So I think what we're looking at is a, a nation of dogs who are lovingly not getting their basic needs met, um, are being misunderstood, misread, and put in, in really tricky situations. So I want to see responsible 
responsible dog ownership. As a bar raised far higher across the nation, everybody um, is asked to be more aware of their dog's needs, of its body language and how it communicates, and to have a higher standard of training across the country. I think that is 100% necessary. So no, I don't think XL bullies are inherently dangerous, and I don't think we have the data to suggest that they definitely are. We're just looking at pictures uh, right now that would sort of belie what you'd say, <laughs> but, but I do take your point. Of course, the Dangerous uh, Dogs Act mm. uh, was too pervasive, wasn't mm. it? And ended up kind of outlawing temporarily sort of Staffordshire pit bull, which are nice family dogs usually anyway. Uh, so uh, that is the danger, isn't it, here? Now, from what you've been saying, the veterinary advice to uh, Parliament is, you know, we've got to be very careful here. Are we saying that uh, arguably Rishi's... Uh, headline hunting declaration, we're going to ban these dogs. Mm. Are, are we edging towards them not being banned because it's just all too complex? Uh, honestly, I hope that is what happens. But, but do you as feel we... that's happening? I don't think the government have enough evidence to, to keep pushing forward with this. However, it is still going ahead currently. Mm -hmm. um, and that's difficult. I think the Select Committee have a very difficult job now of, of weighing up the logistics of actually following through with this, um, of everything that we'd need to change in the country and all of the dogs that would be abandoned, the impact on the vets, the impact on the rescue staff. Because realistically, there are a proportion of these dogs. They're big, heavy dogs. Um, and if you're going to train your dog to be aggressive, um, intentionally, uh, and it's a big dog anyway, yes, of course, they can create more damage. Mm -hmm. um, and so that does definitely need something doing. But this ban is, is not going to safeguard the public. And, yeah. Well, that's the point, isn't it? Uh, what can we do? I mean, I've seen kids in the mm -hmm. parks, you know, training these dogs and they're they're an extension of their machismo aren't they mm. an extension of their toughness i'm a tough guy and my dog's even tougher and they train them to be like that yeah uh, i would suggest training a dog to attack unless you're an expert unless it's to be a police dog uh, uh should be made a criminal offense I agree. I think there needs to be a lot more regulation. And here, regulating dog trainers needs to be top of the agenda. Yes. You know, actually saying you need to have a certain level of qualification. Dog training is totally unregulated. Anybody can take a dog and train it and charge people money for that. So I really think now is the time to do that. I think as well, just bearing in mind, one of the stats that came out today was fascinating. And that was that when it comes to dogs who are fighting dogs, actually, those people who want to set up illegal fighting rings, those dogs are still pit bulls. So when it comes to criminal activity with dog fights, those dogs are still pit bulls. XL bullies are very rarely used in that context. But as you say, they are status dogs. So people will use them to say, you know, you want to stay away from me. I've got a big, scary looking dog. Uh, but just Look, because the dog looks- has got spikes on yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it's got no ears anymore, which again is already illegal. And so, those aren't the dogs that are being used for fighting. They're not fighting dogs, they're status dogs often. The majority of them are beautiful family pets and very sweet, um, yeah.